Lieutenant Lund with Apache Company, 126 Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault. I'm an 11 Alpha. What was, was that it for that? Yeah. And what's an 11 Alpha? 11 Alpha is an infantry officer. Yeah, so today we're currently working with about a two squads, so a section on Battle Drill 6, which is close uh, quarters combat in an urban environment. Battle Drill 6, you could define it as entering a building, clearing that first initial room so that you can secure a foothold, and then once you've secured that foothold, you can make it through that entire building and announce that it's clear so that the rest of the forces are able to move into that building. I would say the importance of CQB training is very important in today's environment. It seems that a lot of the warfare today is moving away from the kind of rural environment and more into that urban building style fighting. So relatively, it kind of varies on a scale of what our soldiers have been trained on. We have very new privates that have just joined the Army and this might be their very first experience going through an actual building with a squad size element. And then we have up to squad leaders that are leading those soldiers that are brand new and training them to develop them to be future squad leaders. Currently, I'd say that there's still a variance of experience. You got brand new that this might be their very first time today and last week versus the experience that have done this over years and years. I think this experience can be useful to a newer soldier that they can use in their career in the future due to the fact that I believe the future fight is kind of leading towards that more Battle Drill 6 style urban con uh, conflict and them learning this now will just progress to the future of what they might actually see in real life. Okay. I would say my favorite aspect of Battle Drill 6 is there's so many nuances and technicalities of how you can actually enter and clear a room. It's not set in stone of this is the right way to do it. There's put a thousand ways that it can be done, but it's just rehearsing it down to that team level of them going through and doing it with a flow like Picasso painting an art picture. How do you think this training can benefit our allies in NATO or just the threat? I think if we were able to incorporate our allies in future training with kind of a joint operation to be able to train together, that we could refine SOPs or standard operating procedures, which is what I was talking about with those technicalities, and bring the United States along with foreign countries together. That way, if we were paired in a future large-scale combat operation, that we would be able to go into a building and clear and secure a building with foreign partners or foreign allies. This level of training helps us accomplish the 101st Airborne's mission of winning the future fight. Um, uh, PV2 Santiago, uh, ACO 126, uh, my love brother. Oh yeah, can you your first name? Can you spell that for me too? Uh, Harry, H-A-R-R-Y. Uh, so, came up today, Battle Drill 6, moved up in a squad wedge, uh, came into the building, 
uh, came up to a T intersection in this hallway, Alpha team blocked right, uh, Bravo team cleared left, moved all the way through, cleared all the rooms, went pretty smooth. But, so to me, you know, I'm a PV2, I just pretty much started here, you know, I'm still learning the basics, getting through everything, but pretty much the most important job to me is the second man. The second man is covering that first man's back. First man's getting into that room, second man has to be on his, he's got to be right on him, you know, so if he's not, you know, squared away, he's not moving in quick enough with the first man, that first man can be taken out. So it's pretty much, that's the most important job to me at least. It definitely makes this training a lot more serious. You know, everybody has to take it a lot more serious because you never know when this actually needs to be used. All these skills that we learn here, you know, if we're in an environment that it needs to be taken upon quick, you know, it doesn't, you don't have time to think, you just have to do it, you know? So this, these repetitions, it's, it's good. It's good for everybody. Basically, how much uh, experience does your leadership have in running these drills? So, our platoon sergeant, uh, he was previously part of the 82nd Airborne and uh, multiple combat deployments, so all that knowledge gained up over the years, him bringing into us, it's, it's great. You know, it's, it's easy to learn, he's a good teacher, so I think all his experience, it just makes him overall better. It's a different war, you know, it's, it's a different style, you know, we're, it, the war would literally be fought in buildings. So all this training we're gathering here and all this knowledge we're learning over this, this nine month deployment, it's that all of that would be used later in the future. What is like your favorite aspect of a uh, close, uh, close quarters battle? Honestly, the teamwork. Nothing works without teamwork. You know, if everybody's not flowing the correct way, it could all fall apart. So pretty much if everybody just sticks together, they take this training serious, they move together with it, it all flows great. How do you think this training can help our allies uh, in NATO or Eastern Union? You know, they, they could go through, they might know a different way than we know, so swapping that knowledge is probably...